seems like old times coming to see you. I got quite a thrill when I came in the gate. Seems like years. Long <laughs> gone. That isn't little Mickey, is it? Yes. Well, Mickey. How are you? Oh, no. My <laughs> gosh, you've grown about two feet. You make me feel like a midget. <laughs> oh, fellow has to grow, doesn't he? Oh, sure. <laughs> Mickey, will you answer that? Oh, sure. Pardon me. Sure. Boy, he's sure coming up in the world. <laughs> he's got Bob's pants on. He just sent his to the tailors. So that's a nice melody, Bob. I haven't written the words yet. Well, the lyrics write themselves into a tune like that. I'll try it when I'm in the mood. I'm in the mood. That's a good title. Why can't you come back in the morning? They're all busy in there now. Say, listen. No one ever answers the bell in the daytime. I've been here before. Now, I've got to have $8.20 or off go the lights. Oh, now, wait a minute. Well, keep your shirt on. Bob. Bob, can you come here a minute? Can't you see I'm busy? Scram. Who is it? Why didn't you tell them Bob was out? Well, I tried to, Judy, but... Oh, you better come here. Why? Because if you don't, the guy's gonna turn off the electric lines. Holy smoke. Well, how'd you like that tune? Well, you really have to hear a finished song before you can judge it. <laughs> You'll have to pay or off they go. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Don't get impatient. I'll be back. Dad! Dad! Hey, Dad! That must be someone to see Dad. Yeah. You know, Father's married again. Oh, really? Who'd he marry? Anyone I know? I don't think so. Look, Judy, have things been going kind of tough for you folks? Well, sort of. I always thought your dad was well fixed. Well, Dad sold his business, and then he made a few bad investments, and the first thing we knew, everything was gone. That's tough. I haven't got that much money. You have to. It's in the coffee can. I was saving that for Trix's corsets. They're coming COD any day now. Come on, give it to me. But I can't. Come on, Dad, give it to me. This is our one chance, and we can't put it over in the dark. Wait till we sell our songs, and Trixie can have all the corsets she wants. Now, Dad, you can't hold out on Judy and me. Gee whiz, I'll get it somewhere and pay it back. Well, if you'll promise to pay me back, I... There, go give that guy eight dollars and twenty cents. I gotta get back to Don before he starts walking out on me. Come on. Hello, Don. How's Trick? Hello, Mr. Chivins. Pardon me, someone's here to see me. Uh, why don't we play first for Don? Oh, let's sit and talk a while. We can hear the music later, huh? We'd better start now. The way things are in this house, you've got to do things while the doing's good. <laughs> Play Look Up, Not Down, Bob. Yeah, that's appropriate. Come on, sit down, Don. Life is only what you make it. It depends on how you take it. You can be happy or you can be blue. Makes no difference how you try it. It's no use you can't deny it. So there's only one thing. Hey, I thought that... you were going out tonight. Well, I'm saving that money for a new pair of pants. Well, then sit down and be quiet. I can't. Not They're down. too tight. Well, then for Just heaven's sake, stand time. still and be quiet. Look up, not down. Look up, not down. Well, down. well there's a silver line. The water's gone under the bridge, as they say, since you were here. Oh, yes. Tell me why should you worry? Fidget. Why should you care? Yes, indeed. What's all the hurry? It won't get you anywhere. So smile, don't frown. Well, there's no need for pining if you just look up, not down. Hello, everybody. Don, this is my wife. This is Don Hayes, mother. How do you do? How do you do, Mrs. Chevins? Valoran, Miss Valoran, if you don't mind. Why, certainly. Trixie Valoran of the Lehman Shows. You must remember me. Oh, no, that's way before my time. <laughs> I don't believe you were married when I left the old hometown. No, no, uh, I didn't have Trixie then. Oh, uh, well, Bob and Judy have been playing some of their songs for me here. Mm -hmm, I heard them. Uh, quite good for amateurs, don't you believe? Uh, but play it over again, Bob, and I'll sing it as it should be sung. <laughs> you know, dear, more legato, more beautifully. Play it with soul, like Mother tells you. Sit down, Don. Sit down, Mickey. I don't want to sit down. Look up, not down. You see the sun shining if you just look up. Not 
Sing it again, Dovey. I love to hear you. Oh, Trixie. That was beautiful, Mother, but that's old-fashioned. That's the way they used to sing them. What they want now is more pep and jazz. Play it again, Bob. I'll show you how to be sung. Look up, not down. You'll see the sun is shining if you jump. Look up, not down. Still, that kind of stuff, isn't it? Oh, a lot of people like it, Mrs. Chibber. Valor. Trixie Valor, if you don't mind. Oh, not at all. Fancy my changing the beautiful name of Valor to Chibbins. <laughs> Have you ever been to New York? Why, yes, I spend most of my time there. Don't you just love it? Well, New York's all right. I'll say it's all right. Providing you know you're New York. Do you know your New York, Mr. Hayes? Well, slightly. <laughs> when I was the toast of Broadway, my dressing room was filled with flowers. But, Dovey, what you're talking about was 20 years ago. Timothy, don't interrupt me. You see, I wouldn't have had the nerve to ask Trixie to marry me then. Besides, I was married to Maul. Well, we won't go into that now. But I couldn't let Don think I was married to you then. Listen, Dad. Don wants to hear our song. Our song, don't you understand? I know, sir, but I can't have Don here getting the wrong idea. You see, I saw Trixie in the Palm Beach Girl 20 years ago. If I hadn't been married to Ma, of course, I'd have probably been around the stage door myself. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see. Trixie and I were married five years ago, come Thursday. We met at Atlantic City. Atlantic City? Yes, I went to Atlantic City for a rest. Of course, Ma had been dead going on eight years then. I can't see how this can possibly be of any interest to this young gentleman. Oh, wait a minute, Dovey. Well, who should I meet in Atlantic City but Trixie here? I knew her the minute I laid eyes on her. After all those years and then only seeing her in a show. And I was just on the point of marrying a duke. I thought it was a count. A duke. Oh, a duke, yes. He threatened to kill Trixie if she didn't marry him. Oh. He had castles and everything somewhere in... Uh, in Spain. Spain. But Trixie didn't love the Count. And the duke. The duke. So she married me. Now, just think of that. That's beautiful. Let's tell Don about that another time. He wants to hear our songs now. right -o. I'll do the number I was such a hit in in the Palm Beach Girl, when Timothy first saw me. You'll not sing anymore? Not if I have to strangle you! You weasel! Timothy! Now, son, Trixie's got a right to sing a little song. You get away from this piano! I've never been so insulted. Timothy, are you going to allow that boy to insult me? Just a minute, son. You see, it's this way, Trixie. The children are trying to interest Don in their songs. Is that any reason he can't hear my songs? I am Trixie Valeron. Who are they? She's right, Bob. You gotta admit it. Mother, why don't you mix up one of your special Welsh rabbits for Don? You mean the kind I used to make when I was a star? Yes. I used to make them at champagne suppers. Would you like me to whip up one? Oh, yes. Sure, go right ahead. Go on, Mother. Swell. The very best rabbit you've ever tasted. I'll help you. Thank you, dear. Well, I guess you're too bored to hear our songs now. No, not at all. Say, you know that old gal's got something? I think she's marvelous. Yeah, so do we. 
Sit down, darling. come back someday. So what? Well, somebody sat down beside me and we started holding hands and everything. Before I found out it wasn't you. Well, you ought to thank me. Yeah, but he had buck teeth. You mean old thing, I hate you. Do you hear me? Yes, I heard you. You say you No, know, everything you. is gummed up. Who was that? Timothy. Hey. Yes, dear. Things weren't bad enough. You had to make a scene. What's this? Bob took me to a movie and left me there. Left you there? Yes. How terrible of you. Come here, darling. Don't pay any attention to him. He's ill-bred. Oh, shut up. I'm tired of listening to you. No, Bob. You can't talk like that. Oh, I'm sore. They killed the one chance Judy and I had. That poor guy so fed up on family, he'll never want to see any of us again. Now we'll have to go on plugging cheap songs in a ten-cent store. Yeah, and I won't get any new pants. Please. As far as I'm concerned, you can both pack up and get out and take your squawking with you. Timothy, did you hear that boy say I squawked? Do you know why I was anxious to come over here tonight? No, why? Well, first, you, you got to tell me something. Are you by any chance in love with anyone? No, Don. Well, I just discovered that I'm still in love with you. Oh, you're just saying that to make me feel good. You've gone with lots of girls since you left here. I've read about you. You've been engaged several times. Oh, a fellow in my business is exposed to that sort of thing. That's somebody's idea of good publicity. I've never been interested in any of those girls. Tell me, do you care just a little bit about me? Of course I do, Don. Well, then, when the right time comes, I'm going to ask you to marry me. I couldn't consider that. Not with things as they are. Mickey has to finish school, and there's Dad and the rest of the family. Well, I make enough money for all of us. Do you think for a minute I'd burden you with a family of six? And such a family? Stubborn as ever, aren't you, Judy? Have you any idea just how much money I make? It's no use. You just feel sorry for me. Oh, I do not feel sorry for you. Tell me, what did you think of our songs? Oh, with everything going on, it was awfully hard to judge. You must have gotten some idea. Oh, you can't hear a song like that, honey. And really judge it. Well, if it had anything you could, the melody or something would register. Only way you can ever put over a song is to have some big personality sing it. Couldn't you come over tomorrow night? We'll lock Trixie in the cellar. No, I can't. I'm pulling out in the morning. I open my engagement in New York next week. Well, let's go over another one now, then. I promise we'll keep Trixie out. You know, Judy, I've been thinking about that old girl. What? She's got something. Oh, you mean she has something and we haven't? Oh, no, not that exactly. But I think with the right handling, she could be put over in a big way. Woman's done to us. Made a doddering idiot out of Dad. Kept Bob and myself from finishing college. And Mickey. He won't even be able to start. Oh, wait a minute, Judy. Don't speak to me, Don Hayes. Bob and I was taking everything on our songs to... Pull us out of this rotten hole. Well, I'll do anything and everything I can to help you. You can't do anything with something you don't believe in. Nobody can. Oh, please, Judy. You believe in her with all her bad manners and her theatrical get-up and her selfishness and her egotism. You believe in her, all right. Oh, don't be silly. Being silly, am I? Don't you ever speak to me again. Judy, I I'll do anything I can to help you. I don't want any help from you. Good night. Good night, Judy. Where's Don? He's gone. Oh, for crying out loud.
Sandfield, what do you think? I don't know. It sounded like all the rest. It, it didn't catch me in here. I think she swallowed a nail file. And I think it was a whole set of tools. You can't wring tears out of a tune that's a brother to a raspberry. All right, all right. Keep your shirt on. That isn't it. Well, what are you kicking about then, my voice? Just a minute. I'm not complaining about your voice. In fact, you sing very prettily. No, prettily. So that's all you guys know about putting over a song. Here I'm shouting to my throats like a hunk of liver, and you say I sing prettily. I won't take that from nobody. I'm through. I'm leaving. Well, nobody is stopping you. Well, what are we going to do? Oh, no, she didn't get what I was driving at. I've tried out about a hundred of them, and she had the best voice and figure for a number like that. Yeah. Maybe you'd ought to hear her sing in a bathing suit. I've seen her in a bathing suit. That's not the idea. They've got young girls singing torch songs in every cafe in town. What we want is, is something different. Well, I'm not a torch singer. You better stick to your piano. You'll have your hands full. Eddie, you better start that number over again and have a little rehearsal, please. All right, girls, line up for your first number. I don't know why. We know it frontwards and backwards and sidewards. Hey, Eddie. Yeah. Play this for him, will you? I want to talk to the boss. Sure. Though. Big schnozzle on him. Have him spring out from the midst of the girls. That's always good for a laugh. Say, what do you think this is, a honky-tonk? You think my customers would stand for stuff like that? This is a high-class place. Well, I just thought I'd suggest it as a last resort. I don't want a resort. I want something different. Something prepossessed, a novelty, something big. I've got it. Something big, striking, uh -huh. prepossessing. Yes, yes. And sings like nothing you've ever heard before. Uh, what is it? A woman. Oh, I thought you meant an elephant. Who wants to see a big woman walk across the floor? But boy, has she got personality. Just what you've been looking for, a novelty. Fresh after the fashion of the gay 90s. You know, big hat, plumes, spangles. That's the idea. That's the first bit of intelligence I heard around this joint. What's her name? Trixie. Uh -huh. Trixie Valeron. Sounds like a dog. Where is she? In Kansas City. Now listen, Don, I'm in no humor to be kidded. But I'm not kidding. This old gal's a sensation. I'd bank my next year's wages on it. Well, I'm up against it. You better get her. Say, <laughs> I couldn't be worse at all than wrong. Boy, well, I get her and you'll never regret it. Mm-hmm. Maybe it would be better if I open my cafeteria. Say, what's the idea of that old man slamming his door in my face? I gotta get 25 bucks for this package. You're not gonna get any 25 bucks here. That's for those corsets. You can take them right back where you got them. Okay, son, you're the doctor. What was it? Your corsets. Well, where are they? How do I know? I told him to take him back again where he got them. I will not allow anyone to deprive me of my corsets. Do you understand? Oh, pipe down. Well, I need pants worse than you need corsets. 25 bucks. I'll bet there isn't that much money in this whole block. Now, Mickey, hush. I won't have you talking like that. Bob, you promised to pay back that money you took. Yes, I know it. 
But aren't her corsets more important than the gas bill and the water bill and the food we eat? It takes me a week and a half to get $25. Timothy. Timothy, I've never been so insulted. And unless you get those corsets back here at once, I'll walk right out of this house. Now, Dovey. Unless you get those corsets back, I'll walk right out of this house. Do you hear me? Well, now you're talking sense. Well, well, all I can say is, well, I'll answer. Well, can a person do something to help buck teeth? Sure, pull them out. Oh, hello, Don. Oh, well, listen, wait a minute. Judy, it's Don calling you from New York. Don? Yeah. Tell him I don't want to talk to him. You're going to talk to him if I have to bind and gag you. Oh, come on, Judy. Come no, on. No, now, please. Sure, no, you're going to talk to him. Come back. Well, good gravy. Let me get my bearings. Hello. Hello, Judy, darling. No, now, hold on. Wait a minute, will you? And listen. What? Well, I'm all right, but listen to me. I've got a scheme to put that old feather bed of yours to work. No, no, your stepmother. All you have to do is pack up and come right to New York. All of us? Well, we can't do that. You must be drunk. Well, we can't just up and travel like that. But I tell you, I've got her a swell job here at the club. I'll get an apartment for you. All you have to do is leave tomorrow. I guess we'll have to mortgage the homestead to get railroad tickets. No, you can't do that. Wait a minute. What'd you say? It's already mortgaged. They won't give me any more. Uh, what you going to do that for? Well, maybe we can sell the silver. Gee, Don, it's no use. The house is in soak up to the second story already. Thanks just the same. I'll telegraph you the money. You'll do nothing of the kind. What did he say? Oh, don't be a little idiot. You can pay. Trixie will be a sensation. Well, I don't know whether Trixie will want to do it or not. Maybe you better ask her. Oh, honey, pamper her a little bit. Be nice to her. You know, fill her full of praise. All right, anything you say. Yes, yes, we'll be leaving tomorrow night. All right. Goodbye. Did he ask you to come to What did he say about pampering? At last, the white elephant has turned into a golden goose. What goose? Your mother. Say, what is this? Now, give me a chance and I'll explain everything. Don has a job for Trixie in the nightclub he works for. And he wants us to all pack up right away and leave for New York. And he says that maybe he can sell our songs. Better hang up the phone, it'll be cheaper. And he's got the money for the tickets and he's gonna send it to us. And he says all we have to do is to get Trixie's okay and the best way to do it is to pamper her. Well, that's all we've been doing. She won't know the difference. Why, Trixie will be glad to go when she finds out how much it means to all of us. Well, let's break the ice. But remember, we'd better be nice. Swear. Don't you want to sit yes, down? Do Couldn't, not. I, couldn't I get you a glass of water or something? Mother? Mother? Well, come on. Out with it. Well, we're all gonna leave for New York. Well, I won't move one step out of this house without my new courses. Well, you can get them in New York. Well, that's where they have them. Well, they make them there. Well, I'm sure you can get them there. Would, wouldn't you think so? Well, anyway, Don's got a job for you to star in his new show. I won't star in his show without my new courses. Look at that. Just look at that. Where are you going? We're going to find that express when they get Trixie's corsets. Well, how do you like it? Oh, I suppose it'll have to do. Where is Trixie's boudoir? Why, right down the hall, the first door on the left. <laughs> piano isn't very much good. Trixie says the piano isn't very good. Well, we'll have another one set right up. Well, thank you, Donald. You're welcome. <laughs> Where do I sleep? Well, I tell you, we've got a whole hallway full of bedrooms. You kids will have to fight it out among yourselves. Do uh, you like movies? Well, yes. Movies are all right. Will you take me sometime? Well, uh, I'll tell you what I'll do. 
We'll make a standing date for the 31st day of every September, April, June, November, and February. <laughs> <It's so cute. laughs> How about unpacking, Judy? Need a little help? I need a lot of help to understand all this. Why? What's so difficult about it? It's time you and I had a little talk, Don. Why not a long one? This is the silliest thing I've ever heard of. Moving into an expensive place like this when we're so broke the cockroaches have even deserted us. I was just thinking. I suppose there'll be a lot of admirers waiting at the stage door and sending you flowers and jewels and things. Naturally, darling. Naturally. Dovey, I hope you won't forget your Timothy. Forget you? Oh, I couldn't do that. I suppose you think I've been a little selfish at times. I haven't meant to be. I just didn't want to lose my spirit. But just you be happy in knowing that I'm the old hourglass girl and in vogue at the moment and everything's going to be all right. Oh, darling, get me a telephone directory. I want to call some of my old friends. Now, will you stop worrying? This job's all set for Trixie at good dough. Yes, but the contract isn't even signed. Oh, forget it. The contract will be signed, all right. We should have gotten a cheaper place. Then if things go wrong, Bob and I... Why don't you relax, honey? Let me do all the worrying. Now, everything's going to be all right. Yes, but you don't know Trixie. Guess what? I've got five dates with Don already. I hope they're on holidays. I just love to go places on holidays. Do you think there's a chance that maybe Trixie could sing our songs? Well, Sandfield would have to hear them first. Oh, she wouldn't sing them if she knew they were ours. Oh, don't let that... We just put a beard on them, palm them off on her, she'd never know the difference. Oh, Don, do you think our songs are good enough to go over? Well, honey, we'll do everything we can. Now take that look off your face and smile. Come on. Greenly, darling, I've simply got to see you. I'm so thrilled at being back. Let's get all the girls and have a party. What? A weekend. Oh, I'd love it. Oh, yes. Splendid. I haven't a single date ahead. I'm just in, you see. Yes, darling, I'll call you very soon. Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye. Listen, you're so anxious to go to work, I've got a job for you. Now, you keep your eye on Trixie. Don't ever let her out of your sight. Why? Well, listen, this show has to open right away, see? And Trixie has to be on hand every minute. What with rehearsals and wardrobe and hairdressing, if there's anything that'd blow it up is to have her away when Sandfield wanted her. Well, the five of us ought to be able to keep our eye on her in relays. Only a little more legato at the finish. I'm afraid that's going to be all right. I hope. What do you mean, I hope? It's going to be great. Oh, oh, Miss Valeron, the uh, songwriters want you to autograph a photograph for them, you know, for their office. Mm. Carl Van Strussman and Maxie Moskowitz. I never heard of them. Why, they're the best in the country. Of course, they've only come up in the last year or so, you understand, but right now, top notchers. Mm, I'd like to meet them sometime. Maybe they can write a little specialty just for me, eh? Oh, why, of course, they'd be delighted. Uh, that is, when they're not too busy, you understand? Mm -hmm. Shall I autograph one picture for each of them, or shall I give them a whole set? Oh, I think one would be enough. I'll be seeing you. I'll be suing you. Say, what's all this baloney about these songwriters? Well, I'll tell you. The two kids who wrote these songs are relatives of hers, say. Oh, yeah? You know, old theatrical family, tradition of the theater and all that. Well, Trixie is jealous of their success. And if she knew that they wrote the songs, she wouldn't sing them. It'd spoil everything. <laughs> well, they uh, wouldn't be spoiling much. Say, listen, Eddie. Come here, I'm sick and tired looking at these girls undressed. Put some clothes on them. Let me hear something. Let me see something. For my money, I'd like to know something. All right, girls, get ready. Walk on to see the band number. That makes three of our numbers they're using. Uh-huh. They're nice tunes, too. 
A little hard to ring him in on Sandfield. He'd already paid for the others. But, Miss Valeron, I make it a rule not to have any telephones in the dressing rooms. I want a telephone. I must have a telephone. But, <laughs> Miss Valeron, you know, sometimes you talk at the wrong time and it distracts and you're liable to miss a cue or there's something, you know, it's not Will good. Will you please see that I get a telephone? But, Miss Valeron, there's a telephone here in the hall. I'm sorry, Mr. Sandfield, but I must have a telephone. But, Miss Valeron, Say, uh, I've seen you around here before. Who are you? I'm Timothy Chibbins. Who? I'm, uh, Trixie's husband. Oh, well, that's your own fault. Oh, it's you, Johnny. I'll tell you what you do. You stand right here by this door. If anyone asks for me, tell them I'm sleeping. Oh, are you all tired out? I certainly am. I'll be back in a little while, and I don't want those kids following me. Do you hear me? Why, they're just anxious to help you. I know all about that, but I want to be alone. And you do just what I told you. Yes, dear. Tonight's going to be the biggest night of our lives. Yeah, and after tonight, everybody's going to know those songs are ours, including Trixie. Trixie? Maybe we better go and see where she is. I'll say we had. 4570 Boston Post Road. That's in Pelham, you know. Is Trixie all right? I reckon she is now, son. You can't go in there. Well, why not? Well, Trixie said to tell anybody she was resting. You know, she looks awfully tired. Well, why didn't she just lock the door on the inside? What? Why didn't she lock the door on the inside? Well, she couldn't do Dad, that. Dad, what are you hiding? Out with it. She's gone. Where is she? Well, she'll be back out in a while. Dad, why did you let her go? You shouldn't have done it. You know oh, that we've Dad, been getting why did you do it? You know how much that means to us. Women won't. My dear Trixie. Queenie, darling. Well, 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 well. You know, it's been ages since last we two met. Ages, my dear. And how you've changed. You know, uh, seeing you makes me realize I must watch my calories more closely. <laughs> uh, but of course, I believe in being comfortable. Uh, I never lace myself in. So I notice. <laughs> uh, oh. Uh, it must be tiring, standing so long at your age. Uh, won't you come along in and sit down? Mm -hmm. A minute. The soft here one, please. You've done pretty well for yourself, did not you? <laughs> well, uh, of course, you remember Mr. Bars. Bars? Yes, the Bars. Oh, bars and bars. Uh, cute cut clothes for kiddies. Uh, Paris and New York. Not Bowsy. Why, of course. So you managed to land him after I left. Oh, you can judge for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> and you don't seem to be exactly starving. Oh, my dear Timothy sees to it that my slightest wish is satisfied. A little, um, saggy, perhaps? Oh, oh watch <laughs> it, my dear, watch it. But Timothy doesn't mind. You must meet Timothy sometime. Oh. He's retired, you know. <laughs> A retired captivist. Oh, not retired in 1929, I hope. Oh, no, my dear. We were honeymooning at that time. Traveling on the continent. Oh, he was traveling Europe sometime. <laughs> oh, we've been there. Oh, you know, we had a perfectly ripping time. Practically hobnob. Not really. <laughs> Where are you going, Eddie? I'm going out to get a bite to eat and jump into my soup and fish. I'll be back in plenty of time. Okay, well, be sure you're back on time. What right. is it? All right. Well? Well, what? Where is she? Who? That big hunk of meat from Kansas City. Now, how do I know where she is? Maybe she's out getting a massage. Well, I care if she needs a massage. It's costing me money for a hoistle and she don't show up. That's one thing I wouldn't stand for. <laughs> Doesn't even call up and say I'm sorry. How do I know she'll be here tonight? Oh, don't worry, she'll be here all right. 
I haven't got enough troubles already. I had to send to Kansas City to get one. I suppose you were practically mobbed the moment you set foot on Broadway. Rather. As a matter of fact, I opened tonight. Open tonight? Oh. Where? Club Chateau. Oh, for the love of night, Trixie. I can't let you do that. Not in a nightclub. What's eating you? What's the matter with it? Well, there's nothing the matter with it, but what would your public think? Trixie Valor and singing to the tune of people whistling in the soup, waiters clattering dishes and rushing around like monkeys. I'll oh, forget it, kid. I can't let you do it. Perhaps you're right. Here, Tootin, I'm right. I was led to believe it was a swell joint. A great chance. Ah, chance me. Forget about it, dear, and stay right here with us. Why, it's an insult to even entertain such a thought. It's true. Never let it be said that Trixie Valorant finished up in a joint. Ah, now you're talking to like a good old trooper. You said a mouthful, baby. Why don't you call the hospital or something? Maybe she's been in an accident. Oh, I found all that out at the police station. They have a record of all emergencies going into hospitals. And Trixie wasn't one of them. Well, if I'd been there, she wouldn't have gotten away. Not if I'd had to sit on her. Now, Mickey, I won't have you talking like that about sitting on Trixie. It isn't respectful. You know, I think i better call Sanfield. Give him a chance to get somebody else. Oh, but if you do that, the songs will be out and everything will be washed up. But there's still a chance that she'll show up. You know, children, I'm beginning to be a little worried about Trixie. You're beginning to be a little worried. I'm going crazy. I don't know why we ever left home and why we got this expensive apartment. I've got to pay it all back with what I don't know. Oh, I don't know why we ever had any faith in that old battle axe anyhow. Oh. Bob Chibbins, don't you dare talk that way about my mother. She's an artist and she won't fail her public. I hope she falls down and breaks her neck. Oh, uh, don't worry. She'll show up. The show will go on. Oh, for Pete's sake, what do you know about it? Why, you're not even dry behind the ears yet. Well, don't let's stand around here like a lot of ninnies. Let's do something. Come <laughs> Trixie, dear, uh, this is my husband, Mr. Vars. Hello, Vowsy. Trixie? Well, bless my soul. Who'd ever expect to find you here? My, I'm glad to see you. I've never forgotten you, Trixie. You're just the same. Charming, beautiful, feminine, superb figure. Oh, Vowsy, you always said that I had the most divine figure of any showgirl you knew on Broadway. Of course, my dear, but you know, you and Trixie were a little different. Uh, you were a brunette, and she a blonde. And I'm still a blonde. All you know, those Lehman shows were never the same after you left. Nice of you to say that, Bowser. I don't know why you ever gave up the stage. Would you like to see me in the theater again? Would I? Are you thinking of coming back? Well, uh, as a matter of fact, I was supposed to open tonight. Tonight? Well, aren't you afraid you'll be late? Where was it? Club Chateau. But I'm not going to do it. Really said I should, you know, dishes rattling and everything's so messy. Club Chateau? More or less of a dive, I hear. Well, you have it confused with some place else. You've been there with me. Why, it's one of the most exclusive places in town. Would it hurt me to work there? Hurt you? Why, there isn't a big time around Broadway who wouldn't give his shirt to work in one of the Sandfield shows. Why, a lot of them stepped right from there to the big star parts and productions. Tree always was full of brilliant ideas. Well, you're not as young as you oh, used to girls, be. Oh, girls, girls. Don't you understand? I saw it. I saw it in girls, a Girls, girls, You girls. tried to keep me off of Broadway. That's what you do. But I'll show you. I'm ashamed of you, Queenie. Now, if you hurry, I think you can still make it. Will you drive me in? Yes, I'll go and order the car. You double-crossing old battle axe. A battle axe, am I? Well, you're nothing more than a scrawny old witch. What did you say? I said you were a witch. I think elephant, but my eyes are open. Oh, are they? Yes, they are. Perhaps this will close the... Stop talking! Oh, me! Oh, Dorothy! Dorothy! Oh, Dorothy! I've done three calendars, and the 31st is left off of September, April, June, November, and February. We better pack up our things and start for home in the morning. Yeah, and I'd better call Samfield and Don and give them a chance to get somebody else. We can't leave them in the lurch like this. Oh, for goodness sakes, wait a while. But we don't dare wait any longer. Oh, all right. Trixie, you've got a black eye. Are you telling me? Now you won't be able to go on with the show. Uh, You'll be a riot with that. Oh, yeah? In the pig's eye. Now, shut up and don't talk to me like that. Get me some hot and cold towels, raw beef, and some grease paint. This isn't the first black eye I've had. Can you do the show? I'm a cinch. I'll show that old hippopotamus. Oh, Mickey. Call 
call Don and tell him she's here. She'll be able to go on with the show. Okay. Bad, three, four, six, eight, nine. Here, Momsie, honey. <laughs> We'd better hurry. It's getting late. Where have you been, Debbie? We've been looking all over for you. Now, don't you stop squawking and get me all upset. Poor little Trixie. Here, let me look at you. Look. Oh. <laughs> Great music, Sam Field. Who wrote it? Ah, a couple of kids I picked up. Think they'd do a show for me? Sure they would. But let me handle the business. I want to cut it. When can we see them? You can see them right now. They're in there. Great. The audience wants. All right, go ahead. Hey, look out. Look out, here she comes. Give her room, give her room. any more empty table. Do you mind if I sit down here? Sure, go ahead. Stepping high, then look out, cause I'm gonna find myself another daddy who's gonna help me forget him. Forget him and dance my blues. and tell him to do my dressing room over in white satin. How am I feeling? <laughs> Come on, I'm zipping. I knew Trixie Valoran when she was with the Lehman Show. My name's Chibbins. Glad to meet you. Bobby? Yes. These gentlemen think your songs are pretty good. Thanks. They want you to write a show for them. Especially that last number. That was pretty good. Did you write that? Yes, uh, that is Judy and I did. What's that? I thought those other two guys wrote the songs. Moscow, Moscow, or Moscowitch. We just said that because we thought you'd like them better. Yeah, did you write the next one I'm gonna sing to? Yes. Then I won't do it. Oh, but Miss Valeron, a real actor wouldn't do this to me. You can't back out now. Oh, can't I? Well, I won't be tricked. Well, this is no time for arguments. The show has got to go on. The show's going on without me. Now, Miss Valeron, you know, in Kansas City... Yeah. It's all right. Don't put your hands on this. But, but don't listen, Miss Valeron, be nice. You know, in Kansas City... The... You've been trying to change my mind. You've been trying that I'm unkind. You've been dreading that we ain't getting nowhere. Don't worry tonight, you're wrong. Come on, hurry some love along. I'm one sweetie, the time's her own love affair. No, the night is cool, the moon is clear. And I'm a fool, but listen, dear. I want some love along.
You're stupendous. You're gigantic. Uh, you just find a medal. I always said that from the West comes the best. Nice kid. Well, Mr. Tibbins, see us in the office at 11 in the morning. Thanks. We'll be there. Right. See. If if you like to meet her, I think I can fix it for you. I know her. You do? She's my wife. You, me, uh, uh. You make the rest of the show look sick. Thanks very much, children. Run along and get your papa. And tell him I'll receive all reporters in my dressing room. <laughs> about pledging our troth? Well, not being an old troth pledger, I don't know exactly how to go about it. But what do we do? Let's go places and do things. We can pick up some new things. Let us say that we'll both honor love and obey. We're heading for a happy wedding. Let's go places and do 